Chromatography. Chromatography is a type of chemical analysis where we separate and identify components in a mixture. There are different types of chromatography, however in this video we're going to focus specifically on paper chromatography. So let's say we have a mixture of dyes and we want to know how many different colours are in this mixture. First we're going to get some chromatography paper. Then take a pencil and draw a line at the bottom of the paper. We're using pencil because it's insoluble. We now have our start line. Then take a pipette and place it into the mixture. Take a small sample and put this sample on the start line. Okay, now we're ready to take a beaker and place our chromatography paper into the beaker. We're going to then slowly add solvent, making sure that the solvent does not go above the start line. If the solvent goes above the start line, it will dissolve the mixture and the experiment will be ruined. Then we're going to place a lid to prevent evaporation of the solvent. And now it's just a matter of waiting. The solvent will go up the paper and as it does, the components of the mixture will also separate. Now the next part is very important and we have to do this quickly before the solvent evaporates. Take a marker, it doesn't have to be pencil, and draw a line up to where the solvent went. This is our solvent front. It tells us how much the solvent has travelled up. Soon the solvent will evaporate and will be left with the line. Okay, now what we've produced is called a chromatogram. And you can see that there are five spots in our chromatogram, indicating there must be five dyes in the mixture. So we've done the first part of chromatography where we have to separate the dyes. Now we're going to move on to the second part, which is to identify what the spots mean. To do that, we're going to have to use RF values. So, how do we work out RF values? The first thing we're going to do is draw a line from the start line to the solvent front. Let's say this line is 10 centimeters long. We want to calculate the RF value for this spot. So, we're going to draw a line from the middle of this spot to the start line. And let's say that was 7 centimeters. Now to work out RF value, we're going to divide the distance traveled by the spot or the die divided by the solvent. In this case, we're going to have 7 over 10 centimeters. That's going to give us 0 0.7. So the RF value for this blue spot is 0 0.7. Now what do we do with this number? Sometimes they'll give you a table like this different dyes and their RF values. From this table, we can see that 0 0.7 indicates blueberry. And we can do the same for all the other spots to work out what they represent. Now it's also important to remember that RF values will always be lower than one because the spot cannot travel faster than the solvent. Another important thing to remember is that the RF value was for this particular solvent. If we done the same experiment but used a different solvent, for example, instead of using ethanol we changed it to propanol, we would have got a different RF value. So keep that in mind because it might come up in the exam question. Okay, so how does paper chromatography work? It's all to do with attraction. During the separation stage, we have two phases, a stationary phase and a mobile phase. The stationary phase is the part that's not moving in this case the paper, and the mobile phase is the part that is moving, in this case the solvent. As the solvent runs over the paper, the different dyes have a dilemma. Should they stick to the stationary phase or go along with the mobile phase? And it's not always yes or no, it could be something in between. So as they separate, we can see that some dyes move faster while others don't move as much. For example, in this scenario we can see that the green spot has moved up the furthest. That means the green spot really likes the mobile phase and doesn't like the stationary phase as much. In other words, it has the highest solubility in the solvent. Conversely, the red spot 
really loves the stationary phase and doesn't love the mobile phase. And you can tell that because it hasn't moved as much. And something like the yellow spot hasn't got preference for either. That's why it's in the middle. So remember, if it's more soluble, it will go higher. Problems with chromatography. Let's say we run an experiment and at the end of it, we saw that the spot stayed in the same place, it didn't move. This indicates that it's insoluble. And to get a result, we're going to have to do the same experiment again, but use a different solvent. Another problem could be that two spots are very close together and sometimes you might see this as one, but in reality, we have two different colors there. The reason this happens is because they have similar solubility in the solvent. So how do we get around this problem? One way is to change the solvent so that perhaps one of them is more soluble in the new solvent compared to the other one. And therefore they will move differently. Okay, let's move on to an exam question. W, X, Y, and Z are food colorings that may cause hyperactivity behavior in young children. A scientist used chromatography to see if these food colorings were used in two suites S and P. The results are shown on the chromatogram. So here we have the results for suite S, suite P, and for reference, the food colorings W, X, Y, and Z. From the chromatogram, what conclusions can the scientists make about the colorings in suites S and P? So we're going to have to look at the chromatogram and see what conclusions we can make. Number one, we can say that sweet S has six colors because we can see there are six spots. And sweet P has five colors. That's already two marks. Another point you could raise is that both S and P have the same five colors circled. So right now we have three marks. However, let's see what else we could have said. Both contain W and Y, and neither contain X or Z. So in total, there are five points you could have mentioned for this particular question. Hey guys, if that video helped you, support our channel by liking, subscribing, and sharing it with your friends. And more importantly, if you still have questions, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com where I will personally be there to help answer your questions. Mohammed signing out.